Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee, and I'm so glad to be back with you again today. Now, today, we have an upgrade video. Well, it, it's more of a pre-upgrade. I am, eventually, going to be upgrading my 2010 Mac Pro, the single processor, to a dual processor machine. Now, how do you do this? Well, honestly, you got to buy one of these. The tray is interchangeable. You just take out the single tray, put in the dual tray. Now, that sounds great, right? Keep in mind, these trays cost more than the computer. And it has gotten somewhat more expensive. Uh, when I first started doing this uh, back in late 2019, I was getting the computers for 100 to 150. I had two of them, actually three. The one I'm working on now I got back then. And the trays, 300 to 350. Meaning I was spending, let's say, 450. For dual core 2010 through 2012 Mac Pro. Very reasonable, I think. Uh, okay, the computer I already had. I managed to find this tray for 380. I'm glad to get it. You know, most of them are more expensive. Now, as cheap as this is, probably because the specs on it, it's written right here on the top. 2 by 2.4 gigahertz quads. So, these processors need to be upgraded, clearly. And that's going to happen. But, it occurred to me, let's at least see what is going to happen if I replace the trays now. Now, remember, in there right now is the 3.46 gigahertz Xeon with six core. So, you know, we're going to find out are two processors already always better than one? I kind of doubt it. What I expect in Geekbench, single core scores obviously got to go down. Whereas the multi core score, the slower processors, but the two extra cores. Probably a wash. Now there will be more RAM, and I did get them. This kind of interesting, very slender RAM sticks. Uh, so we'll, we'll boost that. It'll have uh, 48 gigabytes. Not really going to make a difference because 24 for one CPU, 24 for the other. But we might as well try it and see what happens. And then later on, once I finally get the CPUs <laughs> on the slow boat from China, then we're going to have something. Well, anyway, should be an interesting thing to discover. And if you find that interesting, please stay tuned. Well, here we are on the Mojave desktop. Uh, you can see this actually was the May 28th test that I ran just after I did the upgrade to the 3.46 gigahertz 6 core processor. Uh, here I've, I've run the test again uh, and we, we can see that actually we've gone up slightly in the single core score and in the multi core score uh, but very close and these do change a little bit and I guess there's been a change in uh, Geekbench uh, or maybe it was the upload because I had at the time I did this test I had not uh, purchased the license a little annoying I'm using Geekbench 4 instead of Geekbench 5 
uh, in order to be consistent across the 2010 Mac Pro to the 2008 Mac Pro to the 2006-2007 Mac Pro. Those machines on El Capitan can't run Geekbench anything higher than 4. I had thought my Geekbench 5 license was going to was going to go. Uh-uh. Yeah, it was not accepted for Geekbench 4. So I went ahead and bought another license. Uh, so it is a fully licensed Geekbench. And yeah, we're using Geekbench 4 because it will be consistent uh, and you can get a direct comparison between those different machines. All right. So what I'm going to do is save this test. Uh, I found sometimes when I've done that in the past, I haven't been able to open them again. But we'll give it a shot. And we've always got this screenshot if we need it because these these are in the ballpark. Rather than about this Mac, we can look right here in Geekbench, uh, seeing 10.14.6 Mac Pro 5 comma 1, uh, 24 gigabytes of 1333 megahertz DDR3 RAM, uh, Xeon W3690, one processor, six cores, 12 threads. Uh, so, when next we're together, we're going to be looking at the outside of the machine and actually performing the upgrade. Stay tuned. Alright, the performing of this upgrade is hardly a difficult procedure, but we might as well see it. there we pull out the old tray I by the way have given this some time to cool we'll need to take the RAM from here put it into here so both CPUs will have their 24 gigabytes And the upgrade is accomplished. Now, hopefully, of course, it all boots and everything is all good. Uh, I would record the boot. However, noting that this graphics card, uh, the AMD Radeon RX 580, this one is not Mac flashed, so you would spend most of your time looking at a screen. So the next thing you should see, hopefully, is going to be back to the desktop of Mojave. Stay tuned. Well, we did boot successfully. First shot, that's a good thing. Now we want to take a look at about this Mac to make sure everything is registering. Yes, indeed. We're still a Mac Pro mid-2010, but processor is now 2 by 2.4 gigahertz quad-core Intel Xeon. Memory, we now have 48 gigabytes of 1066, oh yes, 1066 megahertz DDR3. Uh, that's because of these processors. Uh, it, it is t uh, 1333 megahertz, but these processors can't deal with that. So, <laughs> yeah. 
But, hey, we know the tray works, we know the ram works. These are good things. All right, so what I'm going to do now is run Geekbench 4 uh, and see how these tests compare. Uh, I will be greatly surprised if we learn that anything other than that we were actually better off with the single uh, 3.46 but hey it's it's an experiment well now of course there's no need for you to wait through uh, the results of this test it takes several minutes to run so we'll see you in a, just a moment actually a, <laughs> barely a second for you uh, with the results stay tuned well, the CPU benchmark results are in, and <clears throat> pretty much what I had expected. The single core score is very noticeably down. The multi core score is up by a couple hundred, but we'd probably need to run contrasting comparisons uh, between the two. To really see that yeah slightly higher here uh, so what I'm going to do is set the machine back to its task of folding uh, and we'll give it that real-world test fold uh, shoot thought it would just open up to that. That's okay. We'll come in here. Find folding. Web control URL. All right. Well, that's interesting. Okay, we'll start it folding. Now, what we have to do here, uh, this this can't be looked at as an accurate reflection. Uh, okay, uh, it, it takes, mm, say, a couple of hours to actually work its way up to speed. So, I'm, I'm going to give it that chance. Now, it, it is true, as I was saying, folding is a very CPU intensive task. And it does tend to take maximum advantage of multiple cores. Now, we're already looking to be 5 to 8 thousand points less but we've got to give the machine a chance all right so we'll certainly get at least that one more clip uh, so just to to see what's going on here and we will see if I'm actually gonna leave this machine with the dual core tray in or go back to the single core tray until such time as we get the new processors. Uh, let's let's let this figure be the judge of that, why don't we? All right then. Stay tuned. Well, having just finished dinner, I thought I would come in here and take a look at what the machine is doing. Uh, and, and based on this, it's, it's been through a couple of changes. It was doing 42,000 a little earlier, now 46. That's right in line with what it was able to do using the 3.46 gigahertz single. Uh, it's not any better, but it's certainly not any worse. Uh, which is interesting. Um, now, just to get some comparison, 
the 3,1 2008 Mac Pro. We'll see that screen. Okay, I'm going to refresh this page just to give it the best chance. Yeah, it's doing 32,000. Uh, I've seen it do more. I've seen this go from about 32 up to uh, as high as 39, 38, anyhow. Uh, which is good. And it's got a heck of a project going right now. Not sure what effect that has. Whereas the 5,1 now with a weaker dual CPU 8 core at 46,770. So yeah, that's that's very much in line. Now I'm gonna let it keep working probably until tomorrow morning unless something unusual happens because I, I think you know, we're seeing right now what this machine's going to do with this configuration uh, <clears throat> and that being the case since it's it's not any better and since the single core uh, work which is most applications you'd run, quite frankly, um, is so much better. I, I think I'll probably switch the trays back and keep this tray ready and waiting uh, to see where we go once those new processors arrive. Because that's going to be <laughs> that's going to be really dramatic. But it'll be a while. Uh, I hope that. Now, do take a look when that video comes out of the upgrade to the dual processors because that's going to be just a beyond dramatic difference. Well, so I think I'm, I'm going to sign off now. If there's anything more than an addendum, uh, heck, we'll do that. Why not? But be good to other people. They surely deserve it. Be good to yourselves. You especially deserve it. Take very good and careful care in these difficult times, and darn it, they don't seem to be getting much better, do they? But we're all here. We're all feeling well. I'll be back with you real soon. We'll have more videos and I hope more interesting stuff to come. This has been Broken Electronics. <laughs>